Welcome to Electrical Engineering with Excel. This video is about developing user-defined Visual Basic for Applications code for returning the desired SI engineering prefix for capacitors. In an earlier video, we created VBA code to return the applicable SI prefix for a numeric input argument. We exploited the fact that each prefix level is a base 1000 number with an exponent. Therefore, the log base 1000 of 1 million is 2, and the prefix should be mega. And the log base 1000 of 1 1 millionth is minus 2, so the prefix would be mu. We simply loaded a string array with all the prefix letters. The user defined function takes in a new number, then returns a text version of the number scaled to the appropriate engineering level with the associated engineering prefix appended. An input of 1.5 times 10 to the fifth would return 150k. Here's an example of capacitor values using the engineering prefix function with a capital F concatenated with it. The problem is capacitors sold are rarely denoted or labeled as nano or milli. They are most usually in picofarad or microfarad. Like here, the code 223 is 22 times 10 to the third picofarads. And here, simply labeled microfarads. It could have been marked as 0.47 millifarads. Let's take a look at various manufacturers' data sheets. This Vache capacitor data sheet is all microfarads. The lowest value is 470 picofarads, but is shown as 0 0.0047 microfarads. Here's a Kemet data sheet. The values are a picofarad below 0 0.1 microfarad. A CDE data sheet uses all picofarads, with the highest value being 91,000 picofarad, which is 0 0.091 microfarad. Here's the Curacia AVX data sheet. The values are picofarad below 0 0.01 microfarad. It's also common to see picofarad values below 0 0.001 microfarad. After searching for a while, I finally found a data sheet with nanofarads. So why only microfarads and picofarads? The first SI prefixes were adopted in 1795. These are the ones you may recognize being used today, except for Myria and its variant, Myrio, which is 10 to the fourth. Myriad is from the ancient Greek word Myriaz, which is technically 10,000. In 1960, another set of prefixes were officially added as SI prefixes. These include Pico, Nano, and Micro. At that time, Myria and Myrio were made obsolete. Although micro was adopted as an official SI unit in 1960, it was used long before then. Microfarad is found in 1940s textbooks in addition to micro microfarads, which was equivalent to picofarads. Old habits are hard to break, and I'm sure it's done for simplification. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you have seen a lot of schematic diagrams. They usually specify all capacitors are in microfarads unless otherwise specified. RF companies often specify that all capacitors are in picofarads unless otherwise specified. Instead of using the engineering prefix function we made in an earlier video, we're going to write one that does not return nano or milli, just micro or pico in the various ways like the data sheets. Here are the argument definitions. The input value is just the number value of capacitance in farads. The prefix type has five integer values. Zero through two returns pico or nano split at various capacitances. The argument is optional and the default is one. The round digits argument is also optional and defaults to minus one, which is no rounding. The integer input is simply how many digits you want to round to. Most of the time, the components have been adjusted to the nearest standard value and therefore no rounding is necessary. The space separator argument is a Boolean argument where if true, it adds a space between the number and the prefix. 
it will default to no space. Feel free to modify this into any form that makes you happy. These are just prefix types and defaults that I thought were most useful for my needs. Let's code this thing up. I'm calling it cat prefix. Here are the argument definitions with their associated defaults. Then just like in the engineering prefix code, we will make the variable sep as a space if the space separator argument is true. Otherwise, it will be null. Now using a case statement for the various prefix types, select case prefix type. For the case of zero, if the input value is less than 0 0.001 microfarads, then the return value is the input value multiplied by 10 to the 12th, and the prefix letter is P. Elsewise, the return value is the input value multiplied by 10 to the 6th, and the prefix letter is mu. For the case is 1, if the input value is less than 0 0.01 micro, then the return value is the input value multiplied by 10 to the 12th, and the prefix letter is P. Then so on and so forth for the input value of 0 0.1. For the case of 3, the return value is the input value times 10 to the 12th, and the prefix letter is P. Then for the case of 4, which will be all micro. Now we can do some rounding. If the round digits argument is greater than or equal to 0, the return value is a rounded version of the return value with the number of rounded digits. Finally, take the return value and concatenate the set variable the prefix letter, and the capital F to be made equal to the function name cat prefix, and then in function. Here's the table of the various text return from our function for various capacitance values on the left. Notice where the prefixes transition from pico to micro. Now let's go to Excel and put it to use. Here is a very simple spreadsheet to use as an example. It calculates the resistance of a single pole low pass RC filter based on a given capacitance input. Here's the formula for the resistor using the E series user defined function we made in a previous video to return the nearest 1% resistor value. I created text box labels below the reference designators R1 and C1. We will make those dynamically linked to the calculated component values. For the C1 label, we will use the cap prefix function with the value of C1 as its argument with no additional arguments. For R1, I'll use the previously used engineering prefix function to return the applicable prefix for the value of R1 concatenated with omega. Now click into the text box under R1 and type an equal sign in the formula bar and select the cell we made for the label for R1. Then do the same for the label for C1. Notice the label in the schematic changes with the new calculation. I like to hide the cells generating the labels so that the user is not distracted by it. Thanks for watching. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content.